Do you want to learn effective ways to build relationships, generate sales, and grow your business from successful entrepreneurs, startups, and CEOs without listening to a long, long, long interview? If so, you've come to the right place. Gresham Harkness values your time and is ready to share with you precisely the information you're in search of. This is the I Am CEO Podcast. Hello, hello, hello. This is Gresh from the I Am CEO Podcast, and I have a very special guest on the show today. I have Rich Milliman of Extra Duty Solutions. Rich, it's awesome to have you on the show. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. No problem. Super excited to have you on. And what I wanted to do was just read a little bit more about Rich so you can hear about all the awesome things that he's doing. And Rich is the CEO of Extra Duty Solutions, a service that helps law enforcement agencies administer their extra duty programs. Rich's professional background includes uh, focuses on business, uh, business services and operations. After serving as a management consultant for McKinsey & Company, Rich ran a portfolio marketing and operations at Bank One's credit card unit. He then ran several emerging and mid-sized business services firms for a European family office. Prior to co-founding Extra Duty Solutions, Rich, is, Rich played an active role in operational risk, security, and back office operations at the world's largest hedge fund. Before Extra Duty Solutions, no service specifically helped law enforcement agencies with their extra duty programs. In 2015, Rich realized that there was an inefficiency in the way extra duty was being administered and started Extra Duty Solutions with his colleague, Adam Bryan. It has grown to be the largest extra duty service company in the United States and is now active in over 60 departments across the country. These services include handling client interaction, scheduling, client invoicing and collections, officer payment, feedback, all aspects of the extra duty program administration. Law enforcement agencies maintain control of all management dis decisions associated with their program. Extra duty does the work and eliminates the financial risk. Are you ready to speak to the IMCO community, Rich? I am. Awesome. Let's do it. So to kick everything off, I know I touched on it a little bit in your bio, but I wanted to hear a little bit more about what I call your CEO story and what led you to get started. Sure. Um, so as you mentioned before, uh, Extra Duty Solutions, my partner Adam and I worked at a large uh, financial services firm. He was uh, in physical security. I was um, head of uh, parts of risk, operational risk. And physical security and operational risk tend to work together a lot. And so we used to utilize uh, extra duty officers for various security needs that we had in different cities. Um, that was where I actually became acquainted with the concept of extra duty. Um, when we left the, the, uh, the organization, we realized there's really, as you mentioned, an inefficiency in the market. If you're the um, head of, of uh, chief security officer at Walmart and you want to hire officers in 300 Walmarts around the country on Saturday night, you have to call 300 different police departments. Mm. So we thought, well, we'll be the one-stop shop. You know, Walmart just calls us and then we'll deal with it. And so that's how we started in 2015. We started on what we call the corporate side. And we, uh, we had a lot of large corporate clients. And in the beginning, we didn't have a large staff yet. So it was really myself and a few other folks that were calling police departments. And it was there we realized that the police departments have a need. You know, they, a large corporation, they can throw money at problems. When you're a government agency, you really can't do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, didn't, they weren't pro kind of properly staffed to handle the administrative burden um, or think through the financial risks that come with these types of programs. So we shifted gears and started working more with the uh, law enforcement agencies, helping them and exited the corporate market. So we only work with law enforcement agencies now. Um, so that's how, that's how we got into this business. Nice. Well, I definitely appreciate that. And I definitely appreciate, you know, I think a lot of times when, you know, someone wants to start a business or start an organization, you're always looking and looking and looking, you know, for a reason to start it. But a lot of times you, I think, and you can definitely correct me if you feel the same way, that a lot of the best businesses are solving some type of problem. And they're usually sometimes right in front of our face or something that's sometimes frustrating us. Uh, it, it, usually if you just open your eyes, you know, what makes you kick your chair? What makes you frustrated? What annoys you? Uh, and if you really think through that, um, you, you come back with one or two things, either a really good comedy sketch or an idea for a business. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> one or the other. At least yeah, right. be laughing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. But, um, so I, I know you touched on it a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit more on like, exactly what Extra Duty Solutions is and exactly sure. serving clients? Sure. So, so let me tell you a little bit about what Extra Duty is because a lot of people aren't really familiar with it. So a lot of times, you know, if you're a law-abiding citizen, 
A lot of times when you see police, they're working in what's called an extra duty capacity. This is also called off duty or secondary employment. So if you go to a movie theater on Saturday night, and there's a uniformed officer there. Uh, or if you're driving down the highway and there's a construction site and you know Verizon is, is ripping up the road and putting in pipes and there's a cruiser there with an officer, those officers are working what is called extra duty. So at that moment in time, they're being paid by the movie theater chain or Verizon to be there to provide security or be there in case something goes wrong for public safety. Those programs called extra duty pro programs that uh, police department and sheriff's organizations have can be very burdensome on the organization. So you have vendors or customers as they're called calling the organization and asking what are the rates and how do I hire somebody and what do I need to do? Or it's raining this morning, I'm not gonna do my job today because it involves outdoor work, I'm gonna do it tomorrow, I need to shift everything to tomorrow. Um, or you know, it's Black Friday, I need four officers instead of two. So there's a lot of interaction. Then you have to schedule the officers, You know, who's not working active duty, who's able to work, uh, who wants to work. You have to figure out the rates. There's, you know, a lot of times um, financial considerations. You know, you have to pay the officers now because they worked, but the customer doesn't pay for three weeks or three months or whatever. Right. You have to go chase down bad debts. I mean, you're doing a lot of work. You're basically running a security firm inside, well, you know, an, an agency. And so um, what we do is we eliminate that whole administrative burden for the agency and take over all the financial risk. We, we eliminate that and we eliminate some of the legal risk too. And um, um, it, we just make it a much smoother interaction between the corporations or the individuals trying to hire the officers and the, the department itself. But all the, all the while leaving the decision making, the management of the program, you will, if you will, with the department. We're administering it, we're doing all the work, we're taking all the risk, but the, the department is still managing their program. They decide the rules, they decide how, how should um, uh, the, the, uh, the um, details be uh, divvied up amongst the officers, what should the rates be. We're just doing all the work, we work for them. Right. I, I definitely appreciate that. And I, um, I know that there's kind of like this phrase, I think it's used more for individuals, but kind of like a zone of genius. And I, I think that a lot of times it sounds like what you're doing is also helping organizations have and work in their zones of geniuses, the things that they do best so they don't have to worry about all those different aspects. Because like you said, sometimes when you're doing, you know, 70 different things, when you really know you do one or two things well, your one or two things aren't as well done because you're stretched thin doing so many things. Yeah, that and, and the other issue too is, is, you know, there's this notion of pushing tasks down to the lowest level that they can be done at in an organization. So, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want the chairman of the board doing the typing, right? right. Um, so, you know, nobody goes into law enforcement so they can answer the phone and answer questions from uh, customers to how much is it to hire two officers? or change a road job from today to tomorrow. That's not why you go into that field. Right. So, you know, we, we sort of pitched this, look, you guys do what you do and we'll do what we do and it works out well for everybody. Yeah, it creates that win, win, win situation. Right, right, right. Nice. And, and um, you might have already kind of touched on this, but I want to ask you for what I call your secret sauce. And it could be for you personally or it could be for your organization, but what do you feel kind of sets you apart and makes you unique? Well, I think one thing, as you pointed out, we, we kind of started this industry. So we were at first. So that is always a bit of a first mover advantage. Yeah. Um, and you know, we, our first department uh, in law enforcement started with us in January of 2016. And now three and a half years later, we have almost 70 departments. And nice. so we're, we're the biggest one in this, in this field. And as a result of that, the word of mouth gets around and you get some, you know, you get some um, wind behind the sales a little bit. So we have that advantage. I think the other thing, you know, you mentioned I was at McKinsey and Company, and one of the things I learned there earlier in my career is when you're serving a client, you serve them 110%. So if a client is expecting X, give X plus 10% more, right? And we, I, I, we try to carry that through into what we do here. And we, we routinely get um, a lot of accolades from our departments that we serve because we try to overserve them. You know, when we're asked for references, we give all 70 departments, we call them all. So we give two or three, call everybody, call into the department, call the patrolmen, you know? Mm -hmm. So we try to over-serve. And so there, you know, there's a huge benefit to over-serving. There's a cost to it too, but that cost plays out in the long run because you're keeping your customers happier and that generates more customers and so on. I think a, a, a third um, secret sauce is this is all we do, right? So we're not, 
um, doing something else during the day and doing this at night. We're not serving both the corporate side as we used to serve and the law enforcement side. We're not trying to play both sides of the fence. All we do is work for law enforcement agencies and serve their best interests. So we're never kind of conflicted, right? And then finally, when we do, do try to um, expand or go into something new, it's highly related to what we're doing. So we had a software company that built all of our scheduling software that we use, and we bought that company, and they also have what's called active duty scheduling software, so now we can offer that too. And, and if you need one, you need the other. So, so we, you know, I see a lot of companies that try to buy other companies and expand, and usually it doesn't work out that well or as well as you thought. So we try to be very, very careful about that and stick to our knitting. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. And it kind of goes to, um, I guess, I don't know if this is the correct financial term, but like kind of building a moat um, where you have, you know, different aspects of your company, you have your core competency, and then you start to add on related things. And as you start to add on more and more of those, those things, it's, your secret sauce, so to speak, gets even bigger and larger, and you can do even more. I wanted to uh, switch gears a little bit and ask you for what I call a CEO hack. And this might be an app, a book or a habit that you have, but it's something that makes you more effective and efficient. I try to do what I'm passionate about, right? And I've learned early on, right? I mean, in, in life, you compete against people, right? You go to school and only, only so many kids get A's, only so many kids get into Harvard, only so many kids get jobs at Goldman Sachs. You know, it's, it, it, you're competing, right? Mm -hmm. So if, you're com if everybody's competing, you, you have a certain grades, you have a certain educational background, you have a certain drive, you, you are who you are. You're competing against people who are equal to you. The one with the, who's more passionate will win at the end of the day, because they have a big leg up. Nice. And now I wanted to ask you for what I call a CEO nugget. And this is a word of wisdom or a piece of advice. Or if you can hop into a time machine, what would you tell your younger business self? That's a good one. I, you know, a lot of people, you hear a lot of people say, I want to be an entrepreneur or I want to be a C CEO. And I've always, when I've, somebody has come up to me and said that, I've always said, you know, you should really be saying is, I want to take on tremendous responsibility and work on a higher wire without a net. Because that's, that's, that's what, I mean, it sounds, it's seductive, right? It sounds cool. It sounds like, hey, this is something where I can make a ton of money and not work for anybody else. Man, between here and there, <laughs> there's a lot of walking on a high wire without a net. Yeah. And you're taking tremendous responsibility. And you got nobody above you to reach up to and say, help me out on this one, right? Yeah. So, again, I come back to this theme, it's within you. Is That's not right for everybody. You know, that's, that's right for some people. And if it's right for you and you can think of a good idea and you can go for it, then God bless you. It's, it's, a, great, it's a great thing. But you got to be honest with yourself about um, do you really want to take on that level of responsibility without a net? Um, because, you know, when you fall, you just you, uh, one person I, that I spoke to one time, with, he, he had a physical a retail outlet. Right? Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, I don't take two big vacations because if I did, I'd come back and the store would be gone. All right. So you want that level of responsibility? You know, if you work for Amazon, you take a two week vacation, you come back to jobs there. You know? And Amazon's still there, too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And now I wanted to ask you my absolute favorite question, which is the definition of what it means to be a CEO. And we're hoping to have different quote unquote CEOs on the show. And I know you touched on this, but Rich, what does being a CEO mean to you? Being a CEO means um, um, that you're really working for a lot of other people, right? So people think of a CEO as you're the top and you don't have a boss and all that. But in reality, you're working for everybody who works for you, right? So as a CEO, if you screw the whole thing up, um, other people are dependent upon you, right? For, you know, to pay their mortgages and to afford food and so on, right? So if you make some really bad decisions and have to lay off 20 people, well, those people were dependent upon you. So in a sense, you're working for them, right? Now, I realize that's, you know, cliche a little bit, but it really is true. Like what, and, I, and I think you realize it when you are a CEO and you have a staff of people. Um, you know, I come in every morning and I see how people are here before me and they're working. And, I, and it, that's when it really strikes me that they're not here for their health. And if I do something really insane or careless, reckless, risk-taking, you know, uh, it can end up bad for them. So in a sense, you know, they're relying upon me and I'm working for them. And to me, that's really what it means. There's all the good stuff. There's, you know, there's all the, 
you know, nobody, t if I, if I want to come in late, I don't have to report to anybody, right? If I want to make a business decision, I don't have to ask anybody else. And there's all that, the benefit, right? But at the end of the day, there's tremendous responsibility and, and that responsibility outweighs um, a lot of the other things in terms of what do I think about most? You know, I, I, I don't think about most all the, the fun and sexy and seductive stuff about being a CEO. I think about the responsibility of it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that makes perfect sense. And then understanding, you know, that clients and, and customers and some people have investors and all those people are all, you know, kind of entrenched in everything you do, every decision that you make. So understanding that that is an incredible responsibility. And, you know, every decision that you make, you should just like you bounce it off. Is it in line with what and who you are? Also, is it in line with, you know, helping everybody else out? So I think that uh, is incredible kind of holistic definition to what being a CEO is. And I, I definitely appreciate that. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it too. It's been fun talking about this. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Rich, I definitely appreciate you and appreciate your time. I wanted to uh, pass you the mic, so to speak, just to see if there's anything additional you can let our readers and listeners know. And then, of course, how best they can get out of you. Oh, yeah. Well, um, it's been great talking to you. And um, we're online at uh, extradutysolutions.com, all one word, dot com. And um, if anybody wants to email uh, and ask questions, uh, the best way is info at extradutysolutions.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And we'll make sure to have those links and that information in the show notes as well so that everybody can follow up with you guys, see all the awesome things that you're doing. Uh, again, I appreciate your time and I hope you have a phenomenal rest of the day. Thanks. It's been a pleasure being on. Thank you for listening to the I Am CEO podcast powered by Blue 16 Media. Tune in next time and visit us at imceo.co. I Am CEO is not just a phrase, it's a community. Be sure to follow us on social media and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, and everywhere you listen to podcasts. Subscribe and leave us a five-star rating. Grab CEO Gear at www.ceogear.co. This has been the I Am CEO podcast with Gresham Harkless. Thank you for listening.